ain't no joke. I used to let the mic smoke. Now I slam it when I'm done and make sure it's broke. Hip hop created a musical landscape in the 70s and early 80s by giving New York or the Bronx, especially the Bronx, a, a musical um, foundation or a new start because um, we were just coming off the 60s where the, the entire city was bankrupt. That environment kind of gave birth to hip hop. Hip hop is a culture based on four foundational elements. DJing, MCing, or rap, graffiti, and breakdancing. People use the terms interchangeably, rap with hip hop, whereas hip hop is the bigger culture. Rap is something you do. Hip hop is something you live. Coming from the disco era, you know what I mean? We were inner city kids. We couldn't get into disco, so we had to recreate that disco. And that's what basically hip hop started out as, uh, like the bastard child of disco. I mean, it was our rebellion against that and our recreation of it at the same time. You see, I am Wonder Mike and I like to say hello. The turntables became our instruments. Like, so a lot of people in the inner cities, they didn't have money for instruments. So you had to find those sounds somewhere. So you dug through your pops crate of records and you're just listening for these different instruments and sounds and then you pull from those different sounds and made a total new creation. People forget that the DJ is the backbone of hip hop. That's where it all started. DJ spinning at parties. Herc is um, actually documented as the father of hip hop. When he was playing the type of music he was playing and maybe the way he was playing it, it brought out a different type of energy than ever experienced from that demographic at that time. And he just started putting one drum break behind the next drum break and you would just go to Herc party just waiting for those breaks. B-Boy and B-Girl comes from Cool Herc. B meaning break, okay? Break, boy. You dance on the break. That's it. It all ties into dancing and really going off during the break beat of a song at a party back in the days. And then there was different parts of the record where you could talk over it and then the beat's still going, but you don't lose the attention of the record or the main part of the record. That evolved to MCs getting on the mic and just saying things to keep the party going, which evolved into actually rhyming and rapping because these different MCs will have little sayings that they said. Party people, if you're ready to rock, let me hear you scream. A teenager named Africa Bambada started the Zulu Nation at the Bronx River Projects. It was a new type of gang which focused in on music and dance. Bambada was the first guy to say, hey, let's all come together. You can all play on my set. So he was integral in, in, in uniting hip hop. And in 82, when Planet Rock came out, became a universal hit. That just added to his prominence and his outreach to the rest of the world. The connection between hip hop and graffiti, it's an urban um, thing. Though it was here before the actual rest of the elements of the culture, the people involved in graffiti were directly involved in hip hop as well. Bad Five Freddy told me everybody's died. Bad Five Freddy was the bridge between hip hop and graffiti. He brought the, the South Bronx and the, 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 the people from Harlem downtown to where the hipsters and where Keith Haring was and Madonna were hanging out before he was a DJ at UMTV Raps. He was a graffiti artist. MTV made hip hop global. It, it broke it out of being a niche kind of music or something like these black kids or Latin kids are doing in certain urban areas to an actual viable genre of music that reached middle America and mainstream America. Particularly Walk This Way was the record that took hip hop next level on MTV, man. That collaboration with, with Run DMC and Aerosmith was just perfect. That was really the moment that hip hop became global and MTV played a big part in it. UK, South Africa, where, you know, English is one of their major languages. You see it in Brazil, you see it in Japan. You know, they're big into the culture, man. And you'll go to a concert in Japan, man, and they're rapping every word in English. And then they don't speak a word of English. Hip hop connected the world and music together. This is what the score did. This is what 
Puffy did. Dr. Dre did some of this stuff too. That record I've done for Shakira. Hello. It's hip hop and hip hop record together. You know what I mean? I think institutions are trying to preserve hip hop when you see places like art galleries, you see it in fashion, you see it in business. I think that's preserving hip hop, even when people don't realize that's actually preserving it. Welcome to Hush Tours, the original and the only hip hop sightseeing tour on the planet. Hush Tours is a hip hop sightseeing tour based on the culture. It's guided by the pioneers of hip hop and we take people around the city to different places that were relevant to the development of the culture. Nashville celebrates country music. New York City needs to celebrate the birth of hip hop. We created something from nothing. And hip hop was the first art form that spoke to me. People who looked like me, people I could look up to, the way they put these words together and tell these stories about places that look like where I live. And that's just like what hip hop is all about. It's just evolving and staying ahead of the curve and being something aspirational.